So the next question says, um, how can we know our assignments? Praise the Lord. Say, how to know your assignment? It's the Lord that gives you that assignment. He's the one that gives you that call. For me, it was through prophetic words. That's one. Two, through encounters with the Lord. You know, um, for, for the intercessory, prophetic intercessor, it was through an encounter. God encountered me in a dream and he, sh he told me that this is who I am and this is what you are going to be doing. So like the first time I told you is to know God first. So there was a time in a dream I had, which was the beginning. Jesus came to a room filled with ladies and I was one of the ladies in that room. And his face was battered, very, very battered. It was blood. It wasn't very good to behold. And we're all there. Some sat on the bunk, some on the on down up like that. And he was just staring at all of us. And because the other ladies in the room could not stare him, they couldn't take it. The face was not good to behold at all. So they all began to leave one after the other until everybody left the room. I couldn't leave the room because I felt drawn. There was this passion, you know, over this person that I was drawn to. So I got up and I went to where this man was sitting. And I began to touch the wounds on his face. What other people couldn't do. That was what I began to do. And with fear and sorrow, you know, just like pitying the person with so much compassion. And then suddenly he got up from that chair. He wanted to walk away. Then he turned and said, and you will be my little servant. And then he disappeared. So I woke up from that dream. This was an encounter that I had. So I began to wonder, what does he mean to be his little servant? Like, follow him? What is it? I was just pondering over it. Day and night, it just comes to my mind. I'm like, Lord, show me what it is to be your little servant. But it took time. It took time. It didn't just come once. Everything didn't just enter into my hand. For some people, it will come like a word. You're reading the scripture and it just jumps out to you. And you just see it all written there. Like for my husband, it was there. I think Isaiah or so where he said um, to bind up the broken heart and all that and all that. And he saw his, he saw everything about his ordination right there in that scripture. For, so for some, it's the Holy Spirit that quickens it to you. It can show you in a dream. It can be through a prophetic word that someone gives and then through an encounter. Hallelujah. So that is how you will know it. Concerning the school and then children, it's not like I was always around children that you say, okay, maybe it's my like and passion. No, I wasn't always around children. I only used to volunteer once in a while to do that. So, like I said, it's true, these three aspects, and that's how you get to know it. Sometimes it could be very clear, very, very clear. Some other times it might not be so clear. Like when he talked about this, it wasn't, so I saw this, but how will it be? When will it be? Where will it be? I wasn't married. I didn't know when. But as time went on, see, your map, the map about you, it unfolds gradually. It's not once you see it. As you move in obedience, the more the assignment opens up in your hands. The more you begin to see how wide the scope is. At first, you won't even see the, the wideness. But that small one that he has shown you, have you followed it? It's from obeying, taking that first step. Some of you, he has spoken to you. He said, begin to intercede for your family. How long have you done that? Consistently. It's from there he'll begin to show you some things to do. Instructions begin to come. And before you know it, he's going to also increase the anointing to confront some things in that family. So it's a gradual um, opening. You might not know everything once. Okay, Mama, part of that question says, how to know the nature of my um, anointing? We've answered the question on assignment. The nature of my anointing. So the nature of the anointing, um, it's like, like for, for Paul and all that, they received it. They knew they were apostles. Unto, um, for Paul, it was unto the Gentiles. Uh, for Peter, it was unto... Uh, the Jews, praise God. And so even for me, I, I, it was still through, it's still through the same process for me because I had dreams where I saw myself pulling women out of, out of trouble, out of um, 
like a tribulation kind of to set them on their feet. So I saw these things and I began to know that, okay, it's like, it's like I have a women ministry, something like that. And I remember some time ago, one man who was part of our ministry at the time, he came and told me, say, you have a women's ministry, you know, but it was not time yet. But he said, you have a women's ministry. He began to talk, 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 talk. Then he said, ah, your husband needs to know about this and all that. So, ah, me too. Ah, you have a women's ministry. Ah, ah. So I have a women's ministry. So I saw my husband. I told him, I said, ah, yeah, so some person told me that I have a women's ministry and all that. He just looked at me. He said, women's ministry. Eh, okay. He said, I've not seen it. Yeah, he said, I've not seen it. And as he said that, to, me too, I went to sit down. Because I believe that there was a process I had to go through before that ministry would be activated in my life. Yes, it's there, it's written. But there's a process for it to be activated. And so I had to go through process. I went through process of all the marital things and uh, accepting people, enlargement of heart and all that. Because he knew what I was going to come into. It was for women. Praise the Lord. So even what maybe things that women have gone through, God will give you the passion, the compassion for it. Praise the Lord, so that you'll be able to be an answer, you know, a solution to what they are looking for. You might not be, you, they, when they look at you, you point them to Jesus. Praise the Lord. And then you will know that that is it. It's to women. For me, it's to women. Raising women, preparing them for the revival. Hallelujah. And molding character of young women and also children. Okay, thank you, Ma. The nature of your assignment is like an onion. Your, everything is all together. It begins to unfold in layers as you obey the first instruction. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask, um, we are coming back to you again, Mama. On, um, this question is on intercession. So I'll take two questions at once. The first one says, um, as a prophetic intercessor, how did you get to the point of comfortability in your call? For an intercessor, you are more in the background. How did you learn not to be bothered about those in the spotlight? That's one. Then the second one is, is intercession a calling on its own? Or, are, or we are all called to be intercessors? Can I say my calling is only intercession? So these are like three questions in all. For me, that's my core. Praise the Lord. And you're talking of intercession. Intercession for me is a backside it's a backside thing. You are the background and you are praying. I'm very comfortable there because I know that's my place. Praise the Lord. And as I do what I'm called to do at that place, I come out and I see the manifestation for those who are at the forefront. You know, there's always a strategy. There's a battle tra uh, strategy. There are those who go ahead. There are those who are at the back, watching the backside too so that the enemy doesn't come from the back. Praise the Lord. So that is it. I don't, there's no need for me being in the forefront or struggling for the forefront because God knows how to locate me too at that backside. He knows how to increase my anointing. He knows what I need at that point to stand with someone like my husband. And that was for me one of the first assignments that God gave me. I was still in school then. And as at that time, he was coming to my school, Apostle Arme was coming to my school, then called Pastor Arme, was coming to my school. And like a year into his coming, the Lord gave me a dream. It was it a dream? I was praying. It was like a trance. And he spoke to me. He said, Dina, I want you to begin to pray for Pastor Arame. So I was like, ah, pray for Pastor Arame. This man, does he need prayer? <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my mind. Does he need this one? If he has like a spirit on his own, does he need prayer? I said, it's me that needs the prayer or it's not him. So he said... And I was like, Lord, I don't, I don't think I have what it takes to be able to stand for this man or to do warfare or stand with him. And then the next thing, I was standing and suddenly an armory began to come to my body, just like how you have the helmet. It just came and fixed to my head. I had the breastplate. It just came and fixed to my chest. Everything, they just, it all came and fixed. And then the shield was my hand. And then the last thing that came to me was a sword. It just came and stood in front of me. And when it stood in front of me, the voice said, you have all it takes. So I took that sword. I came out of that trance. So I knew that this was an assignment. And he had given me all it takes. So I'm going to prosecute this issue 
in the place of prayer, I will keep praying for him. For what, I don't know. But when I start praying, the Holy Spirit will begin to drop what I am supposed to pray for him. Mind you, at this time, I was in a relationship. Oh. Yes, I was in another relationship. So it's not as if um, I like this man, so I came to start praying for him. No, I was in a relationship at that time. It was as time went on, God began to speak to me that this man that you are with now is not your husband. And he didn't tell me that this man you are praying for is the one that is your husband. He didn't tell me that. Praise the Lord. And so that, that's how that intercessory... And then it didn't, it didn't end for me. It's not ending for me. But I know that this is my core. And as you prosecute it, other things begin to come up. Praise the Lord. All that things that you're doing begin to come up. When I started as an intercessor, I didn't really used to have word of knowledge or all those other giftings. But they started coming. Even the healing, gifts of healing, in small, small measures, I started seeing them as I continued doing what he called me to do first. So there's that first assignment, there's that first call that he has called you. As you prosecute it, every other thing. Begins. My husband started as a teacher. Praise the Lord. There was no manifestations. There was no miracle signs and wonders. He started as a teacher. I knew him as a teacher 2001 for a long time. But as he did what God called him to do, all that thing started coming up. Then when he went for his ordination with his father in the Lord, he was the one that told him, say, you are called to be an apostle. At that time, he didn't really know. He just knew that he was teaching and he didn't have those manifestations. But as it was pronounced on him, then the other angles started coming out. So there's a first start. There's a first point of call. If you are faithful in it, then others will start unfolding. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.